This video gives some examples of when limits fail to exist. For this function f of x graphed below, let's look at the behavior of f of x in terms of limits as x approaches negative 1, 1, and 2. So let's start with x approaching negative 1. When x approaches negative 1 from the left, the y values seem to be approaching about 1 half. When x approaches negative 1 from the right, the y values seem to be approaching 1. So when x approaches negative 1, and we don't specify from either the left or the right, we can only say that the limit does not exist, because these two limits from the left and right are not equal. Now let's look at the limit as x is approaching 1. This time, when we approach from the left, we get a limiting y value of 2. When we approach from the right, the y values are going towards 2. So both of these left and right limits are equal to 2, and therefore the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x equals 2. That's true even though f of 1 f of 1 itself does not exist, but the limit doesn't care what happens at exactly x equals 1, just what happens when x is near 1. Finally, let's look at the limit as x goes to 2. So here on the left side, the limit is going to negative infinity, and on the right side, it's negative infinity. So we can say the limit as x goes to 2 is negative infinity. Or we can also say that the limit as x goes to 2 does not exist. This is a correct answer. This is a better answer because it carries more information. What values of x does the limit of f of x fail to exist? Well, let's see. Um, negative 1 and 2 are the only two values. Let's talk about the ways that limits can fail to exist. We've seen at least a couple different ways. So we've seen examples where the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. Here's our number A where we're calculating the limit at. So that's one example we've seen. We've also seen examples where they're vertical asymptotes. So there's a vertical asymptote here at A. That limit fails to exist because of the unbounded behavior, because the y values are going off to infinity. There's one other way that limits can fail to exist that comes up sometimes, not quite as frequently, and that's wild behavior. Not a technical term, just a descriptive term. Let's look at an example that has this wild behavior forcing a limit not to exist. And the, one of the most classic examples is the limit as x goes to 0 of sine pi over x, or sometimes you'll see sine 1 over x. If you graph this on your graphing calculator and zoom in near x equals 0, you're going to see something that looks roughly like this. It just keeps oscillating up and down and up and down as x goes towards 0, because as x goes towards 0, pi over x is getting bigger and bigger. And you're going to go through these oscillations between 1 and negative 1 sort of faster and faster. From the other side, when x is negative, you'll see a similar kind of behavior, just oscillating faster and faster as x goes to 0. So here this top value is up here at 1, and the bottom value these are all supposed to hit is at negative 1. Now when you try to decide what the limit is as x goes to 0, well, the y values are going through all possible real numbers in between negative 1 and 1, infinitely often as x goes to 0. So there's no single number that the limit can settle at. And so the limit as x goes to 0 
of sine pi over x does not exist. In this video, we saw three types of examples when limits fail to exist. They can fail to exist because the one-sided limits on the left and the right are not equal. Or they can fail to exist because of vertical asymptotes. Also, limits can fail to exist when there's wild behavior and the function fails to settle down at any single value.